So what is wrong with this crankshaft position sensor? We're going to find out. 2016 Nissan Frontier with a 4.0 liter. This truck gets to my bay with an intermittent stumbling, stalling, and a P0335 crankshaft position sensor. The fellow that pulled it in my bay says, Mike, um, I'm not sure what you're gonna find wrong with it. it's running fine. Uh, the check engine light's not even on. I said, well, we'll go through the motions. So um, when I check these, especially these four liters, they are any cam and crank sensor with Nissan I like to try to do it at the computer if I can um, this truck especially is easier to do at the computer especially when they're hot although I'm going to show you a couple of captures the very first capture I, uh, I have although the trucks running fine there's a big clue within the capture that I want to show you guys in case you see this it is it is a failing crankshaft sensor um, it hasn't failed yet but it is failing and it is a surefire most I'm gonna say 80% of these things that I see that are still working and are intermittent have a signature like what I'm gonna show you in fact uh, right below me there that that is a failing sensor it looks fine um, we're not gonna focus on the top we're gonna focus on the bottom and um, at one point I'm just going to pause and if you guys want to use your phone or whatever take a picture it'll be a good cam and crank correlation to setting uh, you know to have in your library um, it's good for most all four liters or all four liters this truck had a hundred thousand miles on it seemed to run fine the uh, fuel trims are great so uh, I'm gonna say it's gonna be a, a known good which I'll show you guys that um, monthly Auto Nerds group therapy meeting is set for July 20th. Uh, subject to be determined. I think there's about 14 or 15 people signed up at this moment. Um, it's for Pico group members only. If you are a Pico group member, go ahead and sign up. It's on the front page of the forum. If you want to be a Pico group member, which you should be um, click the link in my description box that'll take you to the auto nerds website and uh, it's easy buy a pico kit puts you right in got lots of cool stuff going on over there all right so we're gonna start off with a quick wiring diagram I'll show you guys my hookups uh, the crankshaft position sensor here that's our uh, guest of honor I was hooked at the computer at 89 camshaft position I was at 94 and then I went to 93 that's on the first capture the second capture you're gonna see I actually back probed one and three at the sensor itself all three of these guys they share a same power if you trace this out it goes to a power source and they all share the same ground um, we're going to talk about the ground on the crank sensor and you're probably going to say well why did you check the ground when this one was grounded good and this one was grounded good because they all share the same ground I 100% agree with that they share the same ground here but that doesn't mean that this little piece of wire all the way up to here is good so that's why I back probed it here just to make sure um, we already got the scope out it takes an extra few minutes just to back probe here and here and check power and ground because we're gonna see a fallout um, the other reason I do check the cams along with the crank for one you're in the exact same connector and all three pins are right beside each other so why not you may be able to ward off a chain issue. You may get yourself a known good. And I have seen these cam sh uh, shaft sensors fail. You get it. You get this truck in, and let's say you put this guy in, but you didn't check this or this, and this one or this one fails the same way as this. The 
truck's going to be back in your bay for stumbling and no start and the customer's not going to be happy. So you might as well just check all these signals at one time. If you see anything bad, let's get it taken care of. Uh, it's kind of a win-win for everybody. So uh, let me go ahead and get the capture up. This first capture, uh, this thing's just sitting in my bay idling along. Um, I'll go over a few setups. I use a 50 volt scale mainly because it keeps down on clutter because the bigger this number is it makes them look smaller and with Pico you can always zoom in. Um, you want to make sure you have good sample rate which I use 500 milliseconds division at 5 mega samples. That is plenty of sample rate for this style signal and um, it gives you a one microsecond sample interval and uh, you can kind of see it over here and I can tell you this is this is the setup to use on about everything on the car except for can um, the files are not huge so if you need to post them to the forum ask for help you can um, you can email these this size file it just works good all right, so now that we've captured this thing kind of small, I'm going to go ahead and clutter up my screen because, um, you know, it's for YouTube, so we might as well clutter it up. So, uh, what am I talking about? Is this signal good or bad? Let's get into it. This is one of the cam sensors. I'm just going to drop a line right at the top. It's running about 11.16. The truck's running, running fine. Here's the other cam sensor. I'm going to say it's about the same. Here's the crank sensor. It's running, you know, 10 or 11 volts. Not a problem. You can see there's no fallout in here. Truck's running right along. We'll zoom in a little bit. Pretty standard Nissan stuff for this era and for this engine. And what I'll do later is I'll, I'll zoom in on this and you guys can take a picture with your phone because this is this could be considered a known good uh, as far as a cam and crank correlation. So let's just keep keep looking here. What, so what am I talking about? Let's pull another cursor down. Let's go to the green. Actually, you know what? Let's take them off the screen. We've already checked, checked powers. Let's check grounds. We'll do the green one. I usually just highlight it, hit zero, hit enter, it snaps it right to zero. I like that. We'll repeat for the red, hit zero, snap it. Let's go with the blue. Zero, snap. Wow, what happened? Ground's here, signal's here. There's a little bit of a threshold that these things will run off of zero this this crank sensor is not being able to pull itself all the way to ground um, this is what I was talking about the devil in the details this trucks running fine this signal is you're talking 1.8 volts of voltage drop on a major input and this truck is still running um, this is a big clue as this sensor heats up, it starts getting worse and worse and worse till finally it stumbles and stalls. And um, that's the next capture I'm going to show you. Because once I see this, then I'm going to check power and ground of this. I'm no longer worried about these guys because they're able to pull to ground. And they've got plenty of power. And although they all have the same shared ground, there's still a leg of wire that they don't share so I always check this thing um, now let's say for instance and I have seen if you did this capture and let's say you found this cam signal down here now's the time you need to sell that because the truck's still gonna run fine until the the haul switch just can't pull itself to ground anymore and then and it's probably gonna be three days later on a Sunday and the customers will be good and pissed off. So make it a point. You're already at the computer. Go ahead and check all three or four or however many the vehicles got, especially if you're dealing with a Nissan. Um, so there's that capture. Truck's running fine. So let's check out another one. 
I, um, I went on and let this thing run and get good and hot because I thought this would be a good subject to cover on the channel. And um, here we go. Let's go ahead and zoom this guy up a little bit. We'll do some vertical zooms. Um, there you go. You can kind of see right there where it really couldn't pull itself to ground. So my red trace is power. Like I said, truck's running, so I'm running about 13 volts. No problem. Blue trace. I'm going to click it to zero. Um, you can see we're running dead nuts on. There's no fallout in this ground. This is just a ground voltage drop from the signal to the battery. And here's my signal falling out. Like I said, this isn't the world's most... Um, you know exotic diag but i see this a lot and if you've got an intermittent in your vi in your bay and it's a four liter now look right here see where it on this particular capture it was pulling itself to ground let me zoom back out let's go right in here see it's pulling itself all the way to ground right there and it's doing fine until it gets to here now, once it gets to here, the ECU just can't take it anymore, and it starts acting a fool. So now we're getting into a 1.8, almost 2 volts of voltage drop on this thing. Let's scroll on over. You can see it's trying. It, the hall switch just cannot, um, just can't hold it together. There's a pretty good one right there. See how it's, it's just going crazy on you. So pretty classic failure for these things um, I usually don't let them go this far because by this point they're really hot once I see the capture I showed you before where it's a little bit off ground and I verified my powers and grounds are good I'm putting a sensor in this thing um, like I said this one did kind of cooperate and started getting real bad which makes for um, good YouTube stuff so that's that I'm gonna open one more file and um, I'll zoom in a little bit and uh, you guys can can take a picture with your phone or hit screen save or something and you can use this as known good this is a known good cam and crank correlation for a four liter engine in a frontier they put this engine in a Pathfinder and I even think you could get it in an Xterra um, so First off, let's just zoom in a little bit here. Of course, you can pause this video all you want and do what you want. But notice that the cams, they line up pretty good. And you want these you want these bad dudes to be falling somewhere in here. If they're a little advanced, I'm okay with that. You don't want this thing creeping over into this area as far as your correlation. And you don't want these things, the blue and the green you don't want them to get really separated either because this motor has three chains in it. it has the primary and the two secondaries um and of course it's only on the intake so if you see if you're suspecting any sort of an exhaust cam failure or cam out of time um, you're going to have to go in cylinder or get a little creative with your testing there but that is a known good um Hope it helps out. And um, just want to thank you guys for watching. Hope this little tip helps somebody. I appreciate all the wonderful comments. Um, we're getting close to that 1,000 subscriber mark, man. I'm excited about that. Um, I don't think confetti and balloons are going to fall, but um, it'll sure make me feel good. Uh, our auto nerds, guys, they're eagerly awaiting to help anyone who wants... A Pico scope so check with them if you buy a kit like I said before in the intro if you buy a kit man you are into the Pico group uh, you get access to lots of custom probes like if you have that little micro amp clamp like I showed in my last video PV 350 pressure transducers all this stuff's pre-made um, and it's just there for you um, some people have asked me about some of the overlays that I use I get all that stuff through the Pico group member and not to mention the monthly uh, meetings, not to mention the forum, and 
not to mention the old-fashioned pick the phone up and just call somebody and they answer and they'll answer your questions so thanks again for watching and man i tell you i've got a doozy of a case study coming up i'm excited and i'm working on it now it's going to be badass so uh look forward to that take it easy guys